Hey all, welcome to the next episode of Cyber Tech in 5 Minutes. Today we're going to be covering Azure Peer to Site VPN. So Azure Peer to Site VPN is a part of the Azure VPN services, which allows you to make a client-based VPN towards your Azure VPN. And the benefit about this is that you can use your standard Office 365 or M365 credentials for this. That means that the, a the IDP is your Azure Active Directory. There's a lot of cool tricks that you can perform with this. For example, if a user or if a company has moved completely cloud only and they still need access to some on-site resources, you'd often bump into the issue that your device, your firewall that you have on site, doesn't really have any capabilities to authenticate against Office 365. So what you can do with this is you can actually create an Azure VPN tool, a peer-to-site VPN, and a site-to-site VPN combined using the same instance. And that means you'll be able to connect to those resources easily using your M365 or Office 365 credentials. We've all been in those situations where a client still had something on site, like an IoT device or a PLC or something like that, where they need to connect once in a while remotely. And this really helps in covering that. So let's jump into the documentation about it. So an Azure uh, point-to-site VPN tunnel uses the OpenVPN protocol, SSTP or IPv2. Another benefit about using these protocols means that it's completely compatible with always-on VPNs. Always-on VPN is a technology that Microsoft uses in Windows 10 Pro and up. And you'll be able to directly connect the device to the network even when it just boots or having a device tunnel or all that kind of stuff. That means you can remotely control the device even before a user has taken any actions. They simply start the laptop up and it immediately connects. There's also the benefit that the user doesn't have to click, go, go to the uh, network menu or go to the VPN client menu and connect, connect it themselves. So that's, that's just something fun. Um, the Azure peer-to-site VPN connection actually isn't all that expensive. It costs you 22 euros a month in the most basic SKU, where you'll have 10 IPsec VPN tunnels that you can create, so site-to-site -site tunnels, and 128 different client VPN tunnels. Another cool thing is that it has 100 megabytes throughput, which is actually more than enough for the services I just mentioned. If you're going to work with cameras or all that other kind of stuff, I really recommend the VPN gateway number one, but we'll start discovering it together as we jump into the Azure portal right now. I just wanted to go back to the always-on VPN part because the great thing about the always-on VPN part is that Microsoft even has an example configuration on how you create the user tunnel and how you create the device tunnel. That means it's simply, simply a matter of copying and pasting a policy and the users will have an always-on VPN tunnel. Let's jump into configuring this. So when you go to the Azure portal, you'll have to look for the word virtual network gateway when creating this. When you just look for VPN, you won't really find any results or We'll find external results. So in this case, we're naming our VPN, our test01 VPN, we're placing it in North Europe. We're creating a gateway type of VPN because that's what we want. We're creating a route-based VPN and we're making sure that all the settings are exactly what we want them to be. If you don't have a virtual network yet, don't worry, you can create one now and connect your IP sectional to that. There's also some options regarding the IP addressing. We're just creating a simple dynamic IP address. You can also use an existing static IP address if you'd like. So let's review and create, and you'll see exactly our current configuration, and we hit on create. And now it's creating our tunnel. We'll talk a little bit about exactly how the, uh, what the benefits are of doing it in this way. Like, like I said, the M365 IDP is a fantastic thing because there's no on-site devices that currently support Azure Active Directory authentication for their VPN tunnels. Another cool thing that you can do is you can uh, add network layers to this very easily. Because it first terminates on the VPN tunnel, it's very easy to say, okay, the, these resources can only connect to um, a specific device on the on the network that we're connected to, or they can only uh, connect to a specific virtual machine within Azure. It can all be done using the standard network security groups, so you can add layers of security in any way you want. Another cool thing, like I said, about the uh, VPN tunnel, the peer to side VPN, is that you have the possibility to create these always-on tunnels. And that really helps in case the device is like at an unmanaged location or always needs to be connected to a specific resource or you need to be able to remotely connect to it at any time. So that's, that's 
a couple of things that the Azure P2S VPN can help you with. Um, we've seen it that our clients have been moved to cloud-only solutions and they look to us and say like, okay, hey, we still have these devices on site. We have manufacturing clients or clients with devices that just require a connection from an engineer once in a while. And this is one solution that you can remotely make those available and still be secure, especially because all of the uh, Azure p side VPN can be included in your conditional access policies. That means you can easily say who is allowed to connect, who is not allowed to connect, but also from what locations they're allowed to connect if they have to be uh, Azure AD joined before they can connect. You can also say, hey, I want multi-factor multi authentication for each and every logon, which of course would disrupt your always on device logon a little bit, but we can talk about that later or maybe in a second session because I can see that we're running out of time quickly. Really terrible that I named these sessions tech in five minutes, huh? So we're seeing that this is still creating and Azure can take a while to create this because it creates the virtual network. It creates a network security group. It creates the peer-to-side VPN tunnel. So we're actually jumping back because I probably still have one created or the peer-to-side VPN is already there. So let's go to our test resource group and we'll see that the VPN that we created, test two currently exists and test uh, or test one is our gateway. So let's click on that. When we click on point to side configurations, we'll get a couple of options when we hit configure now. We get the tunnel type that we want to use, and in our case, we want to try to use Ike v2 and SSTP, mostly because we want to make sure that when users connect, they can use Ike v2 for the device tunnel and SSTP for the user tunnel, if we want to use always on. And then we can click here to see what type of authentication we want. This is, of course, the brilliant one that we want. We want Azure Active Directory. And these are simply your values of your standard Azure AD authentication. I won't fill these in right now because, of course, that would take too much time. But you can see right here, learn about Azure AD authentication, and that link just gives you all the instruction that you need. When you're finally done and configured all of this, your VPN is ready to, con to connect to clients. You have a button right here, Download VPN Clients. The VPN client is not a hard requirement, but it does make life easy. The VPN client is a, store, is a store app which just has a configuration, you import and it's done. Otherwise, you'd have to simply create your own virtual network connection, your VPN connection on your Windows 10 machine, point it to the right server, configure the SSTP certificates and such. It just is an added uh, ease of use. So let's recap, shall we? So. There's a lot of options in Azure peer to side VPN, but the biggest benefit is that Azure AD authentication. And that helps you a lot when you've moved your clients cloud only and you only want to have a single IDP. You don't want to manage your local users on a VPN device because one day you'll forget that and you'll be at risk of an insider threat or whatever. The other benefit is that you can easily create network security groups and limit what people are able to do over the client-based VPN without having to have very complex firewalls or such in between. On the cheapest model, which is about 22 euros a month, so $25 a month, you're able to use the Azure Active Directory Azure IDP, and you're able to even make sure that you have 10 site-to-site -site VPN tunnels, which your users will be able to hop through on. I guess Azure VPN is just one of those solutions that in a cloud-only world is super useful for legacy applications and legacy services. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you next time.